Hi everyone, my name is Chris Boudreau and I'm Manamit's Donor Relations Manager. Thank you so much for joining us for today's webinar on counting shorebirds. We have a really fun webinar for you today and in just a moment, I'll turn it over to Monica Iglesia, Manamit's Assistant Director of Shorebird Habitat Management. But I do wanna highlight a few things before we begin. At the bottom of your screen in your toolbar, you should see a box marked chat. If you don't see it, just use your mouse pointer to hover over the bottom and it should appear. If at any point during the presentation you have a question, just click on that chat box and enter it. Abby Sterling, a shorebird biologist at Manamet, will be monitoring the questions to make sure we get an answer for you. And if you're unable to stay for the entirety of today's presentation, it will be recorded. We'll share a link to the recording in a follow-up email so you can watch it on demand or share it with others. So again, thank you so much for joining us. Now I'd like to turn it over to Monica. Thanks so much, Chris, and we're excited that you're all here with us today. We're going to be talking about um, some tips and tricks for counting and estimating shorebirds in the field. Uh, this information has been compiled uh, with content from Brian Harrington, from Brad Wynn, Abby Sterling, and others, um, and I'm excited to share it with you today. Uh, we do have some opportunities for you to participate in this webinar, so we hope you have a pen and paper available and uh, that you're actively ready to jump into working on your estimating skills. So monitoring shorebirds really has multiple components or skill sets that are all rolled into one. We have species identification, we have counting and estimating shorebirds, and sometimes we're also collecting other kinds of data, like the habitat characteristics or the presence of disturbance, presence of predators. It really all depends on the purpose of the research that you're contributing to. But today we're going to focus on the tips and tricks for estimating birds, and we like to be really interactive. So we have a wide range of experiences in our attendees today, and our hope is that we really have something for everyone, whether you're brand new to participating in monitoring programs or whether you're a seasoned surveyor of shorebirds. Um, you might be interested in improving the data you collect opportunistically and you're entering into eBird, or you might actually be participating in a more formal survey effort. However you do it, if you share your data, you want to be as accurate as possible. And we hope that these skills uh, here will help. So data collected um, by community scientists, by staff biologists, and even by casual birders, they all form the basis, they help form the basis of conservation-related decision-making and also help track our progress in conservation. So, for example, monitoring data form the biological basis for the nomination and designation of sites within the Western Hemisphere Shorebird Reserve Network. Data that are collected by volunteers help inform management actions that are made at National Wildlife Refuge and uh, other shorebird, important shorebird areas. And data drive the designation of species onto conservation lists and provide important benchmarks to help us understand how we're progressing in our conservation efforts. And then when taken together, mon bird monitoring collected over time can ring an alarm bell. Like in 2019, when a study that amassed many different types of bird data found that there are 3 billion fewer birds today in North America than there were in the 1970s. This is the figure on the right. And they were even able to quantify the percent change in population for different kinds of bird groups. And among native species in North America, shorebirds as a group have seen the greatest population decline. So data collected by all of us feed into these kinds of assessments. Assessments like this, which shows that shorebirds in Canada have declined by 40% since 1970, and that shorebirds that migrate long distance have declined even more steeply by 52% compared to declines in short distance migrants that have declined by 23% over the same time period. These declines are what drive our shorebird conservation efforts at Manama and in our shorebird recovery program but it takes an enormous network of people that are working all across the Americas to help us improve our understanding about shorebirds and to help us track their populations. And getting better at counting and estimating birds is what I think brought many of you here today. And each one of you has a really important role to play in shorebird conservation. So in terms of data quality, 
the most informative kind of data are true counts, where you know exactly how many birds there are. But on the opposite end of the spectrum, uh, where you think it's less informative data, is presence and absence. So that's knowing whether a bird is there or not. So, but you want to know how many birds were there. You, uh, you want to know on what order of magnitude, and you really can't determine much of a trend from presence and absence kind of data. But since a true count is rarely possible, estimating numbers is a major part of bird monitoring. And your ability to do it well increases the quality of the data collected and the value of those data to helping us understand shorebird species. <clears throat> However, estimating shorebird numbers of birds is difficult. And most field biologists think they're actually pretty good at estimating numbers of birds in flocks. But the truth is, it's quite rare to estimate bird numbers with good precision, especially without any practice. And people tend to have their own estimating tendencies. So some people tend to regularly underestimate numbers, where others tend to regularly overestimate numbers. But really, it's quite rare for someone to be accurate. But the tr uh, what's good to know is that this is a skill that can be learned. Uh, it can be improved with practice and it can be improved upon. So um, even if you're an experienced uh, estimator of birds, it's also good to sort of come in and recalibrate to make sure you're still estimating well. So in general, estimates of small flocks will tend to be more accurate than estimates for large flocks. The larger the number of birds are, the less accurate those estimates tend to be, and the inaccuracy of those estimates tends to grow with larger and larger bird flocks. And so improving our skills and being able to estimate small flocks and large flocks is incredibly important. So some of the ways that the accuracy of your bird estimation might vary could be with the size of the flock. So there's this tendency to underestimate when birds are present in very large groups. Another way that estimating accuracy varies is with the size of the birds. So there's this tendency to underestimate the number of very small birds and to overestimate the number of large birds. And then there's the color of the birds. There is a tendency to overestimate numbers of light birds. They tend to kind of pop out in the landscape. And there's a tendency to underestimate numbers of dark birds. They tend to blend into certain kinds of landscapes. So here's another one of those yellow starbursts, which will indicate that we want you to do something. Um, and so I would like you to participate in a poll by estimating how many dots are in this circle or oval. And Laura, if you ah, okay. Great, we'll give you a few minutes. And remember, we're not counting, you're just estimating. It would take you a while to count. Monica, you tell me when you're ready me to, for me to take it away. Okay, I'm just keeping an eye on how many people are voting, but I will, thank you. Everybody is pro at submitting answers in the poll already, which is great, but if you have any questions, Ask it in the chat and uh, we can help you out. All right. So we have var quite a bit of variance, um, but we do have the most people estimated that there were between 900 and 1,000 birds. Uh, but we do have the second highest is an estimate of between 600 and 700. Thank you, Laura. So um, there are 837 dots. So we had an overestimate here, um, although I did share that there is a tendency to underestimate numbers in large flocks. One thing I have found when I'm teaching this kind of information is that we do have a tendency to kind of overestimate when we're looking at things on a screen. I think there's something a little bit different in the field, but um, people were pretty close. 900 to 1,000 is pretty close. So oh, great job. Thank you. Uh, okay, and now I'd like you to do a mental estimate uh, of the number of these birds. 
And you don't need to respond in a poll, just keep that number in your mind. But I'm guessing you might already have a sense of how many birds you think are there and you may even have the opportunity to count them. Uh, but my guess is that you were much closer in your estimate of how many birds were in that small flock than how many birds were in that larger flock. So here is a flock of sanderling that was seen near Manamet's headquarters in Massachusetts. And there were two biologists that estimated the number of birds in this flock in the field. And fortunately, they also captured this picture. So I'd like you to make a mental estimate of how many sanderling you think are in this flock. And I will give you a few seconds to make that estimate. And feel free to write that number down somewhere so you really feel like you've made a commitment to that number. Um, you, don't, you won't mentally change it when I tell you the answer. So those two biologists in the field estimated that there were 400 birds. And imagine, you know, these birds are flying around, they're maybe flying away from you. But because she took the photo, she's able to uh, actually count the number of birds at home and found that the number of birds actually there was much larger than the number that was estimated in the field. So to think about some of those biases, I have a couple of examples here to, to sort of um, practice. And so as we go through them, I'd like you to make a mental estimate of how many birds. So how many large birds are, do you think are in this flock? And how many small birds do you think are in this flock? So the larger ones are sort of curlew shaped birds and the smaller ones are kind of sanderling shaped birds. And I'm guessing that you have an estimate. And so I am going to tell you that there are the same number of birds, both large and small. The larger birds tend to just take up more space and so it kind of feels like there's more of them. But that's an important thing to think about when you're in the field. And here's another one for a mental estimate. So how many light colored birds are here and how many dark colored birds do you think are here? So this is thinking about that tendency to, um, to be affect your estimates to be affected by the color of birds. So hopefully you have a mental estimate. And there are the same amount also of dark birds and light birds. Did anybody think that there were more light birds or did you do pretty well? Were you able to, uh, Feel free to enter in, into the chat if you have any information you'd like to share with us. I encourage you to think about this when you're in the field and you have light colored birds and dark colored birds to make that sort of mental note. Great. So, but sometimes it might not seem like there are any birds at all out there where you go. So in addition to knowing your own tendencies when it comes to estimating birds, it's also really important to actively scan even when you think there are no birds. And that'll help you increase your own confidence that there were indeed no birds where you were looking. Um, it's pretty easy to overlook birds on a quick glance and it's worth taking the time. So I'd like to take a poll here and you can enter um, the letter of the box that you think has no birds in it. Okay, how, how, how does that look? Can you guys can't see? <laughs> you probably can move oh, right. your own screen. <laughs> Great. I have had it where I was looking at a harvested rice field and I sort of driving by, I thought, oh, there's no birds in that field. And then I got out and I used the scope and there were a flock of Wilson snipes. They were all facing away from me with their stripes facing me. And they were all in there just nestled in, but really hard to see. So it looks like most people think I have played a trick on you. <laughs> uh, which is not true. There are actually no birds in the lower left photo in C. <laughs> Thanks everybody for engaging. So when you're out going to count and estimate birds, one of the first things you wanna do when you approach a flock is to guess the flock size. 
And this is important for a few reasons. But at the, that's at the very least, if something happens, a peregrine falcon comes diving through out of the blue, at the very least, you'll have a general sense of how many birds you thought were there. So at least you have some data. And um, if you are able to conduct your estimate uninterrupted, you can look at your intuitive guess from the beginning and compare that to your more confident estimate that you have at the end. Another thing you'll want to do is you want to figure out as you look uh, if there's more than one species. And if you can tell which ones, you can jot down those species. You might also get an impression of the makeup of the flock. Maybe there's a lot of one kind of species and really just a handful of some other kind of species. And you also want to take a look at whether or not the birds are evenly dispersed. Are there areas where they're clumped up and you're probably going to have more birds in that area and versus areas where they're more dispersed? Eventually, this assessment is going to happen quite quickly. Uh, it'll happen as you approach a flock and as you scan it and as you sort of prepare yourself for estimating. So if your guess on that flock was quite small, like less than 20 individuals, you can probably go ahead and count the birds one by one. If the flock is between 20 to 100, if that was your guess, then you might still be able to count individual birds, especially if there's multiple species and you're breaking them out. But you can also count them by count by count 10 of them and then use that to estimate the rest by scanning for additional blocks of 10. And if you thought there was somewhere between like 100 and 500 birds, you might want to use a larger number for your block estimating, maybe 20 or 50. So you count out 20 or 50 birds. And then you use that mental image of what that small flock looked like to estimate the rest. And for flocks of more than 500, you might want to get a good handle on what 500 birds look like um, and use that to estimate the rest. Or excuse me, you might want to get a good handle on what 100 birds looks like and then use that to estimate the rest. And then for the really big flock, you might want to figure out what 1,000 birds looks like and then use that to block estimate the rest. But remember that as flock sizes get larger and larger, our ability to estimate accurately goes down, especially when you're counting 1,000 at a time, you can be multiplying your error quite quickly. This is why it's really important, if possible, to have a photo that you can uh, use to check your work later. So to improve your ability to estimate really large number of birds, it's important to work on estimating smaller numbers of birds easily. So for this flock, a first step would be for you to guess the flock size. Happens kind of quickly, um, and that's going to help you identify how large your block counts should be. Um, you also want to take note if there's multiple species or not, if you think there's more, and if you think there's more of one kind than the other. And you also want to be mindful of whether or not they're evenly dispersed, and that'll matter when you're thinking about your block counting. So since your guess might be that there are more than 100, but maybe not 500, it would be good to count out 20 individuals and then block estimate the rest. So this is what 20 individual birds look like. But this is what 20 individuals look like when they're more dispersed. So you want to keep that in mind. But then if you use those blocks of 20 as your visual cues, you might get to about 200 birds total. So round number. Um, and you've noticed that there are two species. You have blackbirds and you have graybirds. Um, maybe it looks like half and half. So your estimate might look something like this, 100 blackbirds and 100 graybirds. And then because you took a photo, you'd be able to check your work at home and you'd find that you were pretty close. There were 99 blackbirds and 99, 95 graybirds. So this is a really important technique. It's an ability to see what certain numbers of birds looks like, which is a little bit abstract. Um, but where you do surveys regularly and the order of magnitude of the number of birds you might expect to see, that'll help you think about this scale. So for example, if you, if you very rarely see flocks that are bigger than 100 or 500 birds, you might want to just be, work on being really good at picking out flocks of 20 or 50 birds super quickly. And if you see flocks that are larger than 500 regularly, you might also want to work on some of those larger numbers of blocks. Eventually, you may be able to look at this photo and have a very fast sense 
of the number of birds that are present. So we wanted to ask you a question. We wanted to ask you, um, what is the size of the largest flock that you might expect to see on your surveys? You know, we all do surveys in different places. You might have a sense that you see smaller numbers of birds or some of you might regularly be doing surveys in places where there are very large numbers of birds. And just wanted to get a general idea. And it's okay if you have no idea about how many birds you expect to see. And we're glad you're here. <laughs> Okay, looks like quite a few people see flocks in the 500 to 1,000 range. So um, I, for that group, we'll want to, or for everyone, you know, working on the smaller numbers of flocks, getting good at sort of visualizing them. It's kind of like taking a snapshot in your mind and then, or even like a cookie cutter and kind of cookie cutting uh, that visual of what those birds look like across the flock. And we can, we can look, see what that looks like here. So. Here we have 100 birds. This is 100 snow geese sitting on a field. But remember, they're, they're pretty spaced out there. So this is what 100 birds looks like in that um, more dense part of the flock. And so now that you have a kind of cookie cutter image, you can finish out the flock and you would get to 1,400 geese sitting on that field. Of course, this image was taken from a um, airplane. Might be challenging to get that kind of view but it's, it's a nice visual to really see that kind of number of birds. So the goal for monitoring is to identify all species and to know how many there are of each. But there are a wide variety of reasons that this is challenging or in some cases impossible to do. There might be too many to count individually. The birds are moving around a lot. Uh, your ability to identify all the species that you encounter uh, might be challenged, um, and our ability to est our ability to estimate well how many number how many birds there are that all affects the quality of the data. But the data that you are collecting will be used to estimate populations of a bird group or individual species to see how those birds are responding to habitat protections or changes in their management. So we need to do the best we can given that we're working in this natural environment. So if you come across this flock during a survey, your goal again is to identify what species and how many of each. But you might not be able to identify the species. So in that case, there are often grouping options on your data sheets. So every protocol is a little bit different, um, but there's these groupings for some of the most common identific and identification challenges. Um, so for colidrid sandpipers, uh, like Dunlin and Western Sandpipers, the protocol might ask you to report the genus. So you don't know the species, so you would say, well, it's at least a Calidra species. Um, but there might be more specific groupings to your area. So in this case, in the San Francisco Bay in California, that group is Dunlin, Western Sandpipers, and Lee Sandpipers. So you might say, that's what I know. I, I know it's within that group, but I don't know any further, any more specificity. So some of the other common groupings of the hard to identify shorebirds are like the long-billed dowager and the short-billed dowager. So it might be dowager spa or dowager species, the least um, lesser yellow legs and the greater yellow legs, or curlew and godwit. So these are groupings that add precision to your data, but it's more informative to record, for example, that you saw 100 dowagers, if you're confident it was a dowager, but you don't know which species, and that would be better than recording that you saw 100 shorebirds. Um, so, but if you have no idea what species they are at all, or not even what type, then of course record shorebird species. So, but then you wanna know the number of birds. So how many birds do we think are here? Um, well, so it looks like there's more than 10. So maybe you would guess maybe somewhere around 100 but you would want to count out 10 individuals and then maybe block count to get your estimate. These birds are flying, so that might be an added challenge if you were in the field. But so here are groups of 10. So there's around 80 birds in this photo. Um, when birds are flying, some biologists actually like to estimate birds going in the opposite direction that they're flying. So for this group, that estimate would go from right to left. 
And that way, if you're maybe looking at birds in a scope, they'll be flying through your fields of vision and you don't need to move your scope. That way, you might be able to then um, count the birds or estimate the birds as they fly through your scope. And then you could even move your scope and jump ahead and even get the opportunity to estimate the flock a second time. Um, this doesn't work, of course, if the birds are flying all over the place trying to evade a predator, but it is a technique. So we've estimated that there are 80 birds in this flock. You might also notice that there are more than one species in the flock. So since you've estimated that there's 80, we now need to estimate the percentage of each that you think are present. So we have another poll here. If you could um, estimate the percentage of this flock that you think are Dunlin, which are the larger colidrid um, shorebird, and what percentage are Western Sandpiper, which are the smaller shorebird. Remember, it's anonymous, so feel free to just enter what you think, and we have no judgment. Okay. Looks like the majority of you felt that there were, it was 30% Dunlin and 70% Western Sandpipers. Um, fortunately, you took a picture while you were in the field, so you can sit at home comfortably and count. And uh, you were all correct. Nice. Well, not all, but the majority of you were correct, and that was great. Um, and so there were 24 Dunlin in this image and 56 Sandpiper, and that's applying that 30% uh, percentage to the 80 shorebirds that we estimated. That's one way to do it. Um, but you have the photo, and so that we have the truth, right? So we can actually ground, uh, ground truth our information. And so there were actually 30 Dunlin in this image and 51 Western Sandpipers, uh, which is quite close. Uh, but because you're sitting at home, maybe you didn't see in the field that there was actually one Sanderling, which is that one identified with the yellow dot. And this is why photographs can be really useful in verifying our estimates and helping to improve our estimating skills. You might also see species that you didn't see in the field when this flock flew by you at a rapid pace. So estimating percentages of different kinds of different species in flight can be really hard, um, but doing surveys at high tide and when the birds are settled or roosting can be a good way to increase the chances that you have of being able to estimate birds that are sitting on standing on the ground. Sometimes species might even sort themselves out separate, uh, pretty separately, and so you, it might make it easier to estimate how many there are of each species. So we have a few species in this image, and I will just, um, I will point them out here. So there are about, there are roughly the same number of the green dots, which are the marbled godwits, to the yellow dots which are Western Sandpipers. Um, and you may have thought that for, there were more uh, of the larger birds than the smaller birds because of size, um, but this is a good example in the field of what that looks like. Uh, and for anybody that's working on your identification of shorebirds, especially ones that are roosting, uh, the red dots are Willet and the purple dot is a long-billed dowager. So another thing to be aware of is that birds are not always evenly dispersed. They might be clumped up like this flock of dots. Does anybody want to take an estimate here? Uh, if you're feeling confident, feel free to enter some numbers in the chat. All right. Thanks everybody for entering some numbers. I'm seeing 250, 600, 900, 500. So there are 624 dots in this image. Uh, but what's interesting here is that you can see that there are higher densities of dots at the front edge of this block of dots versus sort of the, the further back edge. 
the red circle is circling the 100 birds and also the blue circle is circling 100 birds. So you can see how different 100 birds looks like at different portions of this block. So another good practice is to write down your estimates in the field. Uh, many of us are using the great tool of eBird, uh, which is fantastic, but it can be very helpful to have something to, somewhere to write something down while you're in the field, a data sheet or a, um, a book. And that's where you can actually write down a tally as you conduct your surveys. You may see 50 black-bellied plovers here, and you might see 50 black-bellied plovers there, and that's going to be hard to hold that in your mind and when you're starting to see the stilts and the avocets and the yellow legs. Um, so you want to just write it down, and then you can add it all up at the end. So I hope everybody's feeling warmed up um, and that you can have a pen and paper if you don't already have one with you, because this is where you get a chance to do some practice and to get some answers. Um, so we're going to have 23 quiz questions here, and we hope that this is fun for you. Uh, you'll be given an announced amount of time to estimate various numbers of items. You'll want to record a few things. You'll want to record the image number, which will be in the top left. You want to record your estimate. And then you want to record the true answer when I give it to you. And this way, you can look back over your own data and assess your own tendencies. Did you tend to overestimate large um, or over or underestimate when there were large numbers? Or were you pretty um, accurate when there were smaller numbers? Some of the images will have multiple species. So if you would like to, you can also practice your species identification at the same time and um, the breakout of estimating different species within a flock. And I want you to know that this is a good test of mental stamina. It's a lot of mental work to estimate and a lot of work to do it uh, in rapid succession. So you may find yourself getting tired uh, by the end of it. But I hope that you have fun too. So I'm hoping that everybody's ready to go with a pen and a piece of paper or a pencil, some way to record it. All right, here we go. So we're going to start here with a group of shorebird workshop participants in Bahia San Borombon, Argentina. You have 10 seconds to estimate how many people there are. Okay. There were 36. It's a good warm up. We'll move on. So how many shorebirds do we have in this image? We have 20 seconds. Okay. There are 147 individuals in this picture. We have Dunlin. So this, this photo, you may be able to tell that this photo was taken uh, during spring migration. These birds have breeding plumage. Um, so the Dunlin has these black bellies and the Western sandpipers do not have those black bellies. Um, hopefully you're taking some of the things that we've talked about, the, the block estimating, and trying to apply that to these images as we go. You can try to imagine maybe looking at 10 or 20 and kind of looking, uh, kind of chunking it out or cookie cutting across the, across the image. So how many total here? And if you'd like to also estimate how many red and how many white, you can break it down. All right, so there are 42 total pixelated birds, 11 red ones and 31 white ones. All right, hopefully you got that jotted down. We'll move on. So here we're looking at how many total birds 
And if you'd like, how many species do you see and how many of each? Please go, five more seconds. Okay, so there are six total. We have two snowy plovers, which are circled in orange, and we have four sanderling, which are circled in blue. Um, if you didn't identify the species, perhaps you saw that there are at least different sizes of shorebirds in the image. Um, the four sanderling uh, are all the same size, and then the snowy plovers are a smaller bird. They also have different bills. Plovers have much smaller bills, the sanderling have a bit longer bills. All right. How many birds do we see here? We have 15 seconds. Hope you're ready. Okay. So we have 118 total birds in this image. Uh, there are 117 American avocets. And perhaps you saw there was one very small peep, um, which is a small shorebird, probably a leaf sandpiper um, or a western sandpiper or a semi-palmated sandpiper. Those are what we consider to be peeps. Okay. Moving on, how many sandpipers do you see here? You have 10 seconds. All right, there are 60 sandpipers in this image. So we'll be moving on to image number seven. And here we have image number seven. I can't hear you, but you may have had, there may have been a large gasp. Um, you're gonna have 25 seconds to estimate the number of birds here. All right, I'm going to share the answer with you, but then we can also talk through it a little bit. So there are 889 shorebirds in this image. And um, what I did here is I circled birds in groups of 50. So you can see that the birds are less dense in the foreground and they're more dense in the background. And so if you look at sort of the density of birds in the background, you might see that there are about 12 different chunks of 50 birds in the background. Um, and then you also have 50 birds in the purple circles and the red circles, but the purple circles are a little bit more dense, but not as dense as the background and not as loosely grouped as the foreground. So you have maybe two groupings of 50 birds in that middle ground. And then you have about 50 groups, um, three groups of 50 birds in the foreground. And if you did it that way, where you're sort of estimating by 50, but keeping in mind the different densities, you might see that there's 12 blue um, sort of areas of 50, there's two purple groups of 50, and then you have one green group of 50 and the two red, which are very similar. Um, they're just colored differently. And if you add that up, you would have 800, you would have estimated 850 birds in this image, which would be pretty close. To the truth, which is 889. So just to show you sort of the breakdown of what that looks like. Oh, I also wanted to share, I shared this image with an expert shorebird observer. And after looking at this image for about 10 seconds, he said, I think there's 800 birds. Um, 
so he didn't do that breakout estimate that kind of breakout estimating that I shared with you he he was just used to looking at flocks of birds and his intuition was very dialed in. And so that's something that we can strive for to sort of look at this and, and get a feel for how many birds that is, but it takes a long time to get there. And so until then, we practice, practice, practice. So here's another flock of birds. Um, I'll give you 20 seconds to estimate the number of birds here. Okay, hopefully you have an estimate. I wanted to share with you a different technique. So one way you can estimate this flock, and this is a pretty good strategy for birds that are roosting, so not birds that are flying around, um, but if they were roosting, you might be able to count how many birds wide the flock was and how many birds deep, and then you could multiply. This also works well when the birds are relatively even spaced, which can happen when they're roosting. So there are 452 uh, birds in this image. And when I did this uh, sort of counting along these different transects of how many deep and how many wide, I counted 20 down and 23 across, which would be 460. And so that would be pretty close. So you wanna think about different, the, some of these different strategies and when to apply them to the, what you're seeing in the field. So here's image nine. We'll have 20 seconds to work on this one. All right. So you may have noticed that there are two different species. So there's 402 birds total in this image, and you have two different species. You have red knots and dunlin. Um, the dunlin ha have black bellies. This is a spring, again, a spring migration, so these birds are in beautiful breeding plumage. You have the dunlin that have the black ink on their bellies, and there are 50 of them. And then there's the red knots, which have a very rufous orange um, color to them. And there are 352 here. Okay, and one of the reasons we do sort of a short period of time is to really work on getting that mental snapshot and doing what you're going to do in your estimation relatively quickly. So here's another one, we'll give you 20 seconds. Okay, there are 301 semi-palmated sandpipers in this image. I think they were roosting and then something alerted them and they all picked up their heads. Here's image 11. We wanna look at how many birds, or we wanna estimate how many birds are total and if you, there's multiple species, um, how many are, are there of each? About 10 seconds. Okay. Again, we have two species here. I uh, circled the willet in green and all the rest are marbled godwits. So we have 34 total with 32 marbled godwit and two willet. So this is image 11. Remember we have 23. So I just uh, make sure, you know, you're feeling good about this. You might want to stretch a little bit since we're near the halfway mark might be feeling a little bit tired. We're gonna keep going. So here is number 12. 
how many dots? 15 seconds. Okay, there are a lot of dots here. There's 740 dots on this, and I highlighted what 100 dots looks like, so you can see what that looks like, and then you can kind of work on envisioning how many blocks of 100 dots you see in this image. All right, let's move on to number 13. How many? And if you would like to um, work on your species, you can uh, identify the species as well. All right, this is a smaller flock. Um, maybe here you looked at the photo and thought, okay, there's less than a hundred, and maybe you looked for what five birds look like, and then visualize kind of cookie cutting out uh, five by five and maybe got somewhere around 50. All right, that was image 13. Moving on, I'm, I'm seeing people are still awakened and estimating in the chat box, which is nice. <laughs> you don't have to enter your estimates into the chat, though. You're welcome to just, just be in the moment. So here's number 14. So how many birds do we see here? about 15 more seconds. Okay. So, there are 353 birds in this image and I, what I did was I, um, I highlighted 10 of them in yellow in the foreground. You can see they're more loosely um, associated in the foreground. And then I highlighted what 50 birds look like in the back. And so you can then use that as your gauge for your estimates. You might see a couple of flocks of 10 in the foreground, and then you can estimate out of 50 through the back. And just see where you get. We also are gonna make these um, the presentation available afterwards and we'll separate out the quiz questions with the answers so you can kind of go through and test yourself. All right, moving on to image 14, or excuse me, image 15. Um, how many red knots are in this image? Okay, about 15 more seconds. All right, so there are 502 red knots. Um, some of you may have also noticed that there are not only red knots in this image, there are also some uh, ruddy turnstones tucked in there. They have a, more of a, a white and black modeled on their face. You might see those little tiny peeking out, teeny faces peeking out in the group. Uh, and there's also some laughing girls. Moving on to 16. I want to estimate how many dots are here with 10 seconds. Okay. How many dots? There are 122 dots. I like this, the dot spread, because it looks a lot more like a bird flock flying in front of you. So you can sort of see the clumping in the front and the more dispersed birds in the back. Moving on to 17. Here we go. It's a doozy. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to think about it.
All right. Wrapping up the estimate here. These are cormorants, and there are 2,804 cormorants in this image. Um, so I highlighted here that there's 100 um, in the far, at the far end, so you can see them in red, and there's also 100 at the, um, on the left side, the sort of back end of this flock, so you can see the difference in those different densities, um, which might be useful as you were making an estimate, just to give you kind of a mental image of what 100 looks like. move on to number 18. So here's 18, we're estimating docks, we have 10 seconds. And 10 seconds happens quickly, so there are 132 ducks in this image. All right, just, just a few more here. So here is image 19. We'll give you 20 seconds to estimate the number of birds in this image. everybody. I think you're all doing a really great job. I'm seeing the comments coming through. I, it's okay if you're you're totally missing it. That's why you're here and that's why we're practicing. It's all part of it. So there's 330 birds in this image. All right, moving on to number 20. So, which block has the fewest dots? We have A, B, C, or D. And um, if you have, if you can, in just 10 seconds, try to estimate how many there are. All right. You may have guessed that they're all the same. Uh, there's 56 in each. And so here we're trying to show you the difference between what it looks like in like in uh, block B in the upper right when they're, what 56 birds look like when they're closely packed versus when the same, perhaps the same species in block A are more um, loosely dispersed compared to what groups of a different species, the yellow dot species in the bottom left and right. All right. Here's image 21. So we'll have 20 seconds to estimate the number of birds in the flock. Okay, so for this one, this was taken in, taken in coastal Texas, this image, and they're American abacets. Um, and I wanted to share with you the field estimates from a group of biologists that estimated these birds. So there was only one estimate that actually exceeded the true count by 10%. Um, and that one is in black, it's biologist six. But then there were nine individuals that were underneath, under the true estimate by 10%. Um, and those are in red. And then there were only two estimates from this group of 12 biologists uh, that were within 10% of the true number. So this shares a lot with us. Um, oh, and the true number is 1,474 American abacets in this image. And so there's a lot to take away from this. There's one, that there's wide variety in our estimates, um, even in, among trained biologists. Uh, but also that people generally tend to underestimate flocks when they're large and in the field. Um, but also the value of practicing, uh, because with time and with practice, it's likely that this group of 12 biologists would get closer towards uh, the true count in their estimates. All right. 
So this one's 22. So this is image 22. So we're trying to figure out how many semi-palmated sandpipers are in this image. I'm going to give you 30 seconds. So this is a really good instance where having a camera is extremely helpful. Um, you want to remember what we've what we've learned here over the course of the last hour. Um, and if you could photograph this flock in the field, then you can work on estimating the birds in the field, and then you can review your photos back on your computer. And that really is a common practice. You're not cheating in any way by doing that. Um, so in the field, you might work on estimating what 500 birds look like, which would be um, like this block in the upper left corner. And then you can, okay, well, where's another group of 500 birds? And so you maybe below that, you would estimate another 500 birds. And then you can estimate that out to see these bigger, larger blocks of what a thousand birds looks like. And that might get you to an estimate of around 5,000 birds in this image. But because you took a picture, you can go home and it's helpful. One, option, one thing you can do is you can put a grid on the image so you don't get lost as you're um, counting birds. Um, then you can actually count the birds, which takes time and patience. And counting up all the birds in each square, you would get an estimate, still an estimate because it's quite challenging, of about 5,300 birds. That's about five to six percent off from our 5,000 estimate we did in the field when we counted or when we estimated those chunks of 500 and 1,000 birds. So that was image 22 and now we're coming up to our last image which is image 23. And hopefully everybody sees this flock. So these are um, a flock of semi-palmated sandpipers in the Bay of Fundy in Atlantic Canada. And I'll um, give you about 30 seconds to maybe make an estimate here. Um, these birds are roosting at high tide. And, you know, if you're fortunate to come across a flock like this, one, consider yourself very lucky. But two, you might be really overwhelmed. Um, but what I, you should know is that if you do, if you are asked to go out and do an estimate like this, it's really unlikely that you're going to be alone. Uh, it's very likely that you're going to have some help. You may even have another person with you, so you can have multiple estimates. And you'll also have some guidance and some training. And if you're really lucky, someone will take a picture. And if you're super lucky, nobody will disturb these birds. So hopefully you all have some guess. It can be a total guesstimate, doesn't even have to be an estimate here. But what we can do is we can build our, on our experience. So now, because we are estimating pros and we just estimated what 5,300 birds looks like, we can take that image and we can say, okay, that should be somewhere around 5,300 birds. And we can try to visualize how many groupings of 5,300 birds are out here, taking into account the fact that things look smaller the further away they are. And using that estimate, we get to about 120,000 roosting birds on this beach. And this really shows the value of photographs. Um, this photo is actually taken of a roosting flock on a ladder, which is not always possible. And this is an enormous number of birds. So these photos were taken in the Bay of Fundy. Um, and this is a photo actually looking off of the deck at the Nature Conservancy Canada's Interpretive Center at Johnson's Mills um, in the Bay of Fundy. And they regularly 
have to estimate large numbers of shorebirds. Those flocks were taken, those photos of those flocks were taken um, right here along the edges of the Bay of Fundy. So they came up with this system. So they know that from the shore, from these rocks in the foreground to the shoreline at high tide is 10 meters. And it's sloping down and away from us, which is why the 10 meters in the vertical line looks different from the 10 meters in the horizontal line. They also estimate that about 100 birds can fit into a square meter. And so they can use that information to estimate flocks of birds at high tide when the shorebirds are roosting on their beaches. So then you can look at a different, you can apply that to this flock of birds that are roosting on the same beach at high tide. So for every 100 meters squared, if we use that 100 birds per meter squared, then you would have 10,000 roosting birds. So I would estimate that there are about 26,000 birds in this image and likely more than 30,000 birds were on the beach that day if we assume that the flocks would fill in those blocks off of the edges of the image. So that's a strategy that is, was created and applied to a place that is regularly counting very large numbers of birds. So, Everybody made it through. Thank you all for participating in that. Um, <laughs> you did a great job. And I hope that you take that information and you can sort of look at where you were overestimating and underestimating. And then of course, we'll be sharing the resources so you can check your work and sort of look again at some of those images. And these are just some of those tips and strategies um, that people are using in the field, but everybody has different tendencies. And so really you wanna just learn your own and you wanna build your own estimating strength through practice. So I wanted to give you some resources here. So uh, there's a really low tech method for practicing estimation at home, and that can be with beans or with beans and rice and different varieties of beans um, because they look like different species. So you can actually estimate different, uh, the percentages of your different types. So that's sort of the low tech uh, version, especially if for those that can't get out in the field right now which I think is almost all of us. Uh, and then there are some higher tech options like computer programs. And in many cases, these are really the best way, one of the best ways to develop your skills for estimating larger numbers. With the bean estimates, you know, you can count and you can know the truth, but it's unlikely you're gonna be counting very large numbers of beans regularly. So you might wanna use a computer program. Um, so the US Fish and Wildlife Service has an aerial observer training program that's available online. And you can access this using the QR code, uh, which I have here, and you can just sort of aim your phone camera at the link, or you can write down the link, or you can look at it later, you can just Google it. But basically it's designed to help Fish and Wildlife Service biologists that are gonna be doing aerial, survey or aerial surveys to prepare for the field season, because everyone that does estimating has to refresh their estimating muscle before heading out into the field. And so um, you can, on this computer program, you can select your experience level. So we've got, if you're a beginner, then you're gonna get 10 seconds to view an image. And if, it's, if you select your experience level as challenging, you're gonna have three seconds to view an image. You can also select the flock sizes, it can be some from less than 100 or you can select any. So it would just be a variety of flock sizes. And what it'll do is it'll show you an image like this, and then it'll give you an option to, um, a chance to type in what your estimate is. And then it'll give you the actual flock size. So you can see quickly um, how you're doing. And you can do this as often as you want. Another option is for estimating resources is called Wildlife Counts, which is a program. And um, to use this program to its full potential, you'll want to download it. And to do that, you do need to purchase it. And it is $19 for um, an account um, for the program. But it also is similar. And you're able to look at different kinds of animals, from swans on a lake to a herd of caribou to ducks on a pond. And you would get an image like this. And then you would also have the opportunity to enter your estimate and it will actually tally your estimates compared to the truth, and then it will tell you what percentage if you're overestimating or underestimating. So, you know, we didn't get to another important skill 
when you're monitoring birds, which is species identification. We talked about it maybe a little bit, got a little bit of practice here, but there, that's a whole nother webinar. And so I wanted to share some resources for this. So there's the Shorebird Guide by O'Brien, Crossley, and Carlson. And it is a phenomenal book with images and um, it's very useful. And um, so there's that book. And then we also have put together these uh, free regional identification cards that we created through our Habitat for Shorebirds program when we hold workshops in different areas across the Americas. So we may or may not have your region uh, in there, but they're available online at this link below. And then we also hope to put together a shorebird identification webinar in the future. And so with that, we have one more poll that we would like you to respond to, um, and then we'll open it up to some questions. So we, we do have one question for you. Thanks everyone for entering your information here. Greatly appreciate it. And um, now we can open it up to some questions. And I know there was some, a lot going on in the chat uh, during the presentation, but if there's anything we can help you with. So we have, Happy. we have one mm -hmm. question. If there will be a link to a recording and yes, there will be a link and a PowerPoint, um, a PDF that will not have the answers on it, so you can practice without seeing the answers on, on the screen. <clears throat> yeah. Any other questions? You can put them in the chat. <clears throat> Getting lots of, of thank yous, Monica, from around the world. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks everybody for joining, taking the time to work on estimation. Krista just asked really exciting. if she yeah. should be able to share this with others and, and I believe the answer there is yes. Yeah, yeah, please do. Yep, that would be great. Just. Uh, great. I'll expect a, another email from us and thanks everybody for participating. You might feel, I saw one comment coming through that people were feeling a little bit tired and it really is tiring um, and it, it, that's another sort of strength that you build, you know, when you're going out and doing surveys is you're going out, you're in the field and you're also counting and estimating birds, but it gets easier and maybe you won't have so many challenging, very challenging <laughs> questions coming at you at once. You might have a little break between your points. Well, we did have one more question maybe before, before you sign off here is um, how does distance to birds affect your estimations? Yeah. And that's a really I good question. There's a lot of things. It's a great question. Um, so in general, the further away birds are from you, the harder it is to see them. Um, they might be heat haze and the heat of the day might, um, you get this shimmer, so you might not even see the birds at a distance. And there, there have been some assessments of our ability to actually accurately identify shorebird species in the field. And that ability tends to drop off after about 200 meters away from you. So the closer the birds are, the more accurate you're going to be, especially in identifying species, um, but also just your ability to see them at all. That's a scope also will help you quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. Great. Thanks, Monica. I don't see any more questions coming in. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I think this is going to be a great resource to have available for everyone. Well, Monica, I just want to thank you so much for sharing your insight with us today. And, and I want to thank everyone for joining us, being part of this special presentation. I, I know many of you are longtime members and supporters of Manimate, so I just want to say thank you. 
I'll let you know how grateful we are for your generosity and your commitment. Uh, if you're not a current Manimate member, we would really appreciate your support. I encourage you to take a, take a look at our website, manimate.org, to learn more about how you can get involved. And uh, once again, thank you for joining with us uh, virtually. And we hope to see you on a future webinar. You can always see what's upcoming by visiting our website, manimate.org slash events. Thank you, everyone. All right, everybody take care.